Well, let's go to the other side of this matchup because it's not just Philly that's struggling. After being incredibly <clears throat> stable for years, the Celtics, they changed their front office, they changed their coach after last season, but they're still hovering around 500. So what has caused them to struggle? Well, the Celtics have had a bunch of injuries this year. Jalen Brown, who's finally back, one of the guys who's actually going to play tonight, he's missed a bunch of the year with hamstring injuries. And when he and Jason Tatum have been on the court, the Celtics have been six or seven points per 100 possessions better than their opponents. So there is the core of a good team here. But at the end of the day, the Celtics just really struggle to, to generate consistent, good offense. And a lot of that's because they have a lot of guys who are not really pass-first players. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, as we've talked about a bunch, are still learning to play that way. Dennis Schroeder is not really a pass-first guy. He's more of an attack-and-score guy. Same with Josh Richardson. Same with Marcus Smart. So a lot of time when they get into half-court settings, it's a lot of holding the ball and moving it around without really generating open looks for other guys. It's been a consistent theme for them all year, and while their defense has been really good, their offensive issues at the other end is part of what's got them again like the Sixers sitting at 500 and heading into what's a pretty important game for both these teams tonight. Well, and Ime Odoka has talked about the need for them to play sort of on both sides of the ball consistently. Tim, thank you so much for joining us. I do want to bring Cheney back in here and stick with the Celtics because, Cheney, we just heard Tim Bontemps talk about whether or not Jason Tatum, maybe they'll have him tonight. Jalen Brown, they will have him tonight. We know the Celtics, their goals are clear. They have been for years, but they are 500. And right now, they're outside of the top six in the East. So do you see them? this season avoiding the play-in tournament? Well, I was very happy to see recently Jalen Brown return because right. he is the major X factor. But if you look at the standings right now, they're currently number eight. There are some teams in there. Let me circle them mentally. The Hornets, the Wizards, and even the Cavs. Shocker, Cavs at three, all right? Bucks, Heat, Nets, those are all, you know, teams that we don't really worry about when it comes to the playoffs and the play-in. Bulls, interesting, but, like, the Hornets, the Wizards, those are teams that they can look and say, like, hey, if we actually get our guys back on the court more consistently, the last time out, uh, Tatum, 25, Jalen Brown, 23. They've had some tough losses as of late, you know, to the Warriors, to the Suns, but the realistic aspect is you knock out those losses you're gonna have better more favorable opponents moving forward I absolutely think the Celtics can get their stuff together and put themselves in a position to not be in the play-in avoid the play-in at all costs right that's that's the mentality that any coach would have because you want to put yourself in good position they had a rough start to the year yep. I think that things can only trend better for them in the future well and you don't ever ever want to look at COVID as, oh, here's the silver lining. But for the Celtics, right, they're looking at some of the teams that are ahead of them in the standings. And yes, the Celtics are decimated. They're missing a lot of players right now. But they do have Jalen Brown. They have one of their stars. They could, Jason Tatum is questionable, but they could have him, right? And so if they're able to maybe chase some of those teams that are above them that are also decimated, yep. this is the time where it's like, okay, let's see how this can work out. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.